All right, guys, we're going to move on to the next unit. This is unit 10, solids, okay, 3D figures. The first section we're going to talk about is 10.1, um, polyhedrons. Okay, so for polyhedron, this is going to be a solid formed by polygons, okay? <clears throat> and it's going to enclose a single region of space. So polyhedron, that's different from some other 3D figures. So I'll tell you what uh, does not represent a polyhedron in a second. Um, but I want to highlight the word polygons because it has to be made up of polygons in order for it to be a polyhedron, okay? On this polyhedron, you're going to have a face, an edge, and a vertex. A face is going to be the flat polygonal surface of the polyhedron. The edge is going to be the segment where two faces intersect. So if we're looking at this polyhedron down here, this right here is an example of an edge. This is an edge. This is an edge. So there's a lot of edges there. Um, obviously, the face is the flat polygonal surface. So you're talking like this whole section right here is a face, okay? So it has one, two, three, four, five, going around six, seven. This one has seven faces, okay? So this one has seven faces. How many edges does it have? It has one, two, three, four, five, another five, another five in the back. This one has 15 edges. Okay, and then lastly, a vertex. This is uh, the point of intersection of three or more edges. So we're looking at um, like this point right here. That point is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. This is a vertex. So how many vertices are there? One, two, three, four, five, five in the back. This one has 10 vertices. Okay. So be able to identify the face, the edge, and the vertex, or um, count. be able to count all of them. Okay. Um, polyhedrons are classified by its number of faces, okay? Um, it's the same polygon prefix that you use. So for instance, a polygon with five sides we call a pentagon, um, and then, you know, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, depending on how many sides it has. Well, same thing goes for its faces. There's only one that is different. The one that is different is the polyhedron with four faces. So we usually call that a quadrilateral for a polygon, but anything with four faces is called a tetrahedron. So that's, that's the only new word right there, okay? Um, but let's look at some of these examples right here. Um, the first one is a polyhedron, also known as a pyramid, okay, but we're going to give its polyhedron name. So this polyhedron name is has four, five faces. So if it has five faces, this is going to be a pentahedron. So see how it ends in hedron, like polyhedron? Penta is going to be the prefix, okay? Um, this is also known as a rectangular pyramid right there, okay? But the polyhedron name is that one there. This next guy right here has a lot of uh, the two bases. This is also known as a prism, okay? That's one name. And then you want to classify it by its base. Let me erase that. I want to use a different color. So this is a prism, and it has a base that has 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 faces. So this is, can be considered as um, a, dec a decagonal prism. Okay, but its pentahedron name, I'm sorry, its polyhedron name is, um, since it has two bases um, and they're both decagons, 
that means there's 10 uh, faces that go around the little rectangles. So that means it has 12 faces. So this, this guy right here is a dodecahedron. So anything like a polygon with 12 sides is a dodeca, dodecagon. This is a dodecahedron because it has 12 faces. Okay. Um, let's see. This next one right here, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. This one has six faces. So this one is called a um, hexahedron. Okay, so this guy right here with all of these faces is a hexahedron. Okay, looks like it could possibly be a prism, but not too sure about that. Uh, this next one right here with uh, that has a pentagon for one of the faces, and then there's another pentagon in the back. This is also known as a prism. Okay, this is a pentagonal prism or pentagonal prism. Anything that has two bases that are identical, like those two pentagons, and then the rest are rectangles, those are called prisms. We're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a little while. Um, but its polyhedron name has five faces going around plus the two. So this one's a heptahedron. Okay, and then this last one over here, this one has a base that is a hexagon six faces so that means there's six rectangles going around two faces so eight faces it has so this one's an octahedron okay so that one is a an octahedron there are also some polyhedrons that are regular so if you remember what a regular polygon is this, there's also regular polyhedrons okay this is when each face is a regular polygon so I'm going to highlight that so each face has to be a regular polygon that means all sides are equal and all angles are equal and then it says each face is going to be congruent to each other so that's another thing that has to happen so all these regular polygons have to be congruent and then it says the faces need to meet um, at each vertex the same way all around the figure so there's only a few that I want to talk about. I'm sure there's more out there, but we're just going to focus on five regular polyhedrons. Okay, the first one is a um, a regular tetrahedron, a regular tetrahedron. So I don't know if you remember in the classroom all the kites hanging from the ceiling. Those were tetrahedron kites, and so that would be that right there. That's a tetrahedron. The next one is an isosahedron. That one has 20 faces, okay? So the isosahedron is the largest one, and that one is back over there. That one has the most faces. Those are all regular triangles. Same thing on the tetrahedron. Those are all regular triangles. Then you have the octahedron. That one has eight faces. That one is right there. That one also has. So these first three are all made up of regular triangles. Okay. The tetrahedron, the isosahedron, and the octahedron. That one has eight triangular faces. Some people think that the rectangle in the middle is a face, but it's not. It's in the interior. So imagine two pyramids on top of each other, but then just form one solid. So you don't really want to include that base of the top pyramid. That's not a face. It has to be a face that you can physically, you know, like touch, paint. And then we have um, the regular hexahedron that has six faces, which uh, sometimes we just refer to as a cube, okay, because all of those are squares, because squares are regular polygons. And then lastly, we have the regular dodecahedron. This one has 12 faces, and this one has regular pentagons. Okay? So you can see it's easier to make up uh, regular polyhedrons with triangles. So I'm sure, like I said, there's some uh, polyhe more polyhedrons out there that are much larger. These are also known as platonic solids. Okay? 
So all regular polyhedrons are called the platonic solids. All right, let's go to the next slide. So here's the word prism that I was talking about. So let's get into detail and write down a formal definition of what a prism is. So this is when you have a polyhedron with two faces called the bases. So that's an important detail of what a prism is. There's two faces and they're called the bases, okay? They have to be congruent, so make sure you star that. <clears throat> so polyhedron with two faces called the bases, they are congruent and they are parallel. That's the other thing, they're going to be parallel to each other. The other sides of the prism are all called lateral faces, okay? So what is a lateral face? A lateral face is when um, all of those are basically some type of parallelogram that connect the two bases. So I have about three, four examples of what some prisms look like, okay? And I wanna highlight the base, okay? So I'm gonna start with this one over here on the far right. The base right here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this base is an octagon, and there is the octagonal base down at the bottom. Of course, you can't see through the back, but those two are the bases. Okay, and then this one is kind of slanted, but it, you'll notice that all of these right here are all parallelograms. Okay. These are all parallelograms. And then on the next one over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. That's a base. And you'll notice there's an identical and parallel hexagon down below it. And then you have all of these that are your lateral faces. Okay, in that case, those look like they could be rectangles, which rectangles are parallelograms. Okay, here's the base right here. Here's the base right here. And again, they're not always on the top and the bottom. They can be on the front and the back, okay? So for instance, this one that I just highlighted, if we wanted to, we could call these the bases right here. We could call this one the base, and then this one over here the base, because those are identical and parallel. So on this one, and then even this one over here, this could be the base as well as the top, or we can call this the base and this the base because those are identical and parallel, or we could even call this front side the base and then that one in the back the base. Okay, so the thing about some prisms like these two right here, two of the polygons could be any of those could be the base, okay? Now these two over here, there's only one, uh, two bases that they could be, cannot be the, the, the rectangles because then the lateral faces wouldn't all be parallelograms, okay? So only in certain situations. Um, there's also these, uh, a right prism and an oblique prism. Okay, a right prism, uh, all the lateral faces are rectangles. And on an oblique prism, they are not rectangles. So those are going to just be parallelograms. Okay, so the right prism, I know you can't see it, but this one would most likely resemble a right prism because it looks like it's standing straight up, and those are all rectangles. Um, this one, too would be a right prism because those look like rectangles over here. And then these two over here look like they would be oblique because all of the lateral faces are uh, parallelograms. They're not rectangles. We'll give a more detailed definition about right and oblique. Okay, let's go to the next one. Pyramids. So we'll talk a little bit about pyramids. These are uh, another type of polyhedron. It, this one has only one base, and the other sides are their lateral faces. Now the thing about the pyramids, the lateral faces are uh, uh, triangles, okay? 
pyramids can also be classified by their bases. So I'm going to write down the polyhedron name, and then I'm going to write down the pyramid name. So there's two ways you can name it. So the polyhedron name would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This one is a hexahedron because it has six faces. Okay, so be able to name some of these on your homework. You could also call this a pentagonal or pentagonal pyramid. So like the ones before, these could be known as prisms or polyhedrons. Some of these have polyhedron names. Or you can identify it as its prism name. So this one right here on the far right, this one was an octagon. So this one is like an octagonal octagonal prism. This one right here is a hexagonal prism. Okay, so there's different names you can use for these. Um, a polyhedron name for this one, the eight around, this one would be a decahedron. Okay, so different names that you can classify these. Um, here's some more uh, terminology about right versus oblique. And then um, it says right prisms, cones, and cylinders. All lateral edges are perpendicular to its bases. The axis of the cylinders and cones are perpendicular to its bases. Okay, so remember when I talked about how solids, um, some of them are polyhedrons and some are not. So like this is the only polyhedron right here. These two right here, these are not polyhedrons because they're curved. However, they can still be right and oblique, okay, because we're going to talk about these also. So this axis right here is perpendicular to its base. That's why it's right. Same thing for this one. This axis right here is perpendicular to its base. All of these lateral edges right here are perpendicular to its base, okay? Or like I said, if you pick the other base, these are all perpendicular. Oblique, however, on the other hand, is the opposite of that, okay? These are not going to be right. In cones and cylinders, the axis is not perpendicular to the base. And in um, prisms, the lateral edges are not perpendicular to the base. So you're going to have a slant to it. So like this axis, you can see that it has an acute angle right there. Okay, so we're going to represent this as the height of this cone. And we're going to get more into that when we um, find the volume and surface area. We'll have to know that. So right here, like this edge or even the axis in the middle, those make an acute angle right here. Those are not right angles. like over here on the left. This prism over here, these are all tilted okay, or slanted and they make an acute angle with the base. Okay, so we actually want to use this height out here that goes perpendicular to the base to figure that out for each type of uh, solid. Okay, so this is the height that we want to use. Feel free to pause the video if you need to to write down these notes. Um, an exploration that we usually do is called U Euler's formula for polyhedrons. Uh, if you investigate how the number of faces and the number of vertices and the number of edges are related, you'll come up with a formula for um, this uh, Euler uh, mathematician. Euler is the one that invented this, okay, or, or invest, uh, created it and came up with it. He's the one that figured it out. So I want to see if you can figure out his theorem by writing down the numbers of the faces, edges, and vertices for each one of these figures and see if you can figure out the formula, okay? So the first one, we have a, a polyhedron that has five faces, seven faces, so this is a heptahedron, okay? Or a pentagonal prism, those are two different names, but the heptahedron name is uh, the polyhedron name. So how many faces does it have? It has seven faces, because we just said it's a heptahedron. It has... Five, ten, it has 15 edges, and then it has 10 vertices, okay? So 
So I'm going to let that sit and then I'm going to go to this next one. This next one has six faces. Okay, this is a hexahedron or a rectangular prism. It has four, four, and four. has 12 edges and then it has eight vertices. Okay, and just count all the vertices and the edges. This last one, it has five triangles. One, and this is another hexahedron, okay, because it has six faces. Um, it has one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. This one has ten edges, though, and then it has five, six vertices. So if you study these numbers, what does it look like? Could happen here. Maybe perhaps if you add two of them and then figure it out. Pause this video and see if you can figure it out on your own and then I'll put the answer up here in a second. So right now I'm looking at if I add these two right here, look what happens. If I add the faces plus the vertices, if I add those two, that's 17. If I add those two, that's 14. If I add those two, that's 12. How does that compare to that one there? How does the 14 compare to that? How does the 17 compare to that? Oh, it's always two more than that. So the way you want to write this down is the faces plus the vertices equals the edges plus two. Now I know there's other ways you can write it. Faces plus vertices minus two equals the edges. So you can also write it that way. Um, it doesn't matter. They're both the same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it as that. So hopefully you could you were able to figure that out on your own. But that's the relationship no matter what for any polyhedron only. Okay, so polyhedron no it has nothing to do with cylinders or cones or spheres. Um, a net, you should know what a net is, so this should just be a review. This is a two-dimensional pattern that can be folded to form a three-dimensional figure. So this one right here, if we were to draw that, these two right here would be the bases. Okay, so if I were to draw that, if I put one here and one up there, and then I connect each vertex, that's one way to draw this prism, okay? Another way, you could put them over here off to the side. Connect each vertex. Oops, that's not a good drawing. Okay, there's different ways to draw it. So this one is a one, two, three, four, five. This one is a pentahedron. Or a triangular. Prism. And then lastly, there's uh, what you call concave versus convex polyhedrons. So we're just going to write the definition of one. Let's write the definition of a convex polyhedron. This is when a segment that joins any two vertices so um, that lies on a face of a polyhedron or in the interior. So let's identify which ones are convex. Um, again, if you connect a segment of, between two vertices, does that segment either, and let me highlight this, does it either lie on a face or does it lie in the interior? If it doesn't lie on a face or it doesn't lie in the interior, then it's not convex. It would be concave. So let's look at these over here on the left. No matter what I do, if I connect from here to here, that's on the face. If I connect from here to there, it's on the face. If I connect from here to here in the back, that's in the interior. So this one would be convex. Okay, so that one is convex. Um, this one's pretty simple right here. If I connect from here to here, is that on a face or in the interior? All right, so this one is concave, okay, not convex. 
Um, same thing for this one over here. If I disconnect these two, this one is concave, not convex. Okay, so this one's concave. This one is concave because all of those would lie on the face. This one is concave because, again, connecting any vertex would be in the interior or on a face. This one here, if I connect these two, that's on the exterior. So this one is concave. This one is concave because you can connect out here. This one is concave, 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 concave. All of these are concave. This one's a little tricky. That one, because of this edge right here, because of this edge right here, that means this top layer is not one face, although it looks like it could be. So let me erase that real quick. Let me get a different color. So again, this edge and this edge right here. The, if, that, if this whole thing up here on the top was one face, they would not draw this edge or this edge. So if I'm thinking, if I had to guess, and again, I wouldn't put it too close right here. It looks to me as though as this triangle comes up a little bit, okay? It's like tilted up. So if I were to draw from this vertex to this vertex, it would be slightly off of the face. Looks like it couldn't be, all right? And same thing down here. Look at how this edge and this edge kind of go down from each other. So it looks like it, it goes down. Um, but this one's a trick one. I'm going to call all of these concave because if you connect all of these out here, so I would say all of these are concave, except I know this one right here is a little tricky, but they would not draw those edges right there if they were not separate faces. Okay, so that's the difference between concave and convex. And I believe that's the last one, yes.